Alongside the fastest, strongest, smartest animals are nature's misfits, odd, bizarre, and unlikely creatures. Given Darwin's theory of evolution, these animals seem ill-equipped to survive. The PBS series Nature gives us a scientific look at how these creatures not only manage to cling to life, but in some cases even thrive. Everyone knows the feeling at some point in their lives. You're not part of the crowd. You just don't fit in. You feel different. Well, it turns out you're not alone. All over the world, there are creatures that have departed from tradition and taken a separate path. They may look a little strange, and they're living lives quite unlike those of the families they came from. These oddballs appear to be misfits of nature, but they are no accident. Each one is an unconventional solution to the problems of life. It's time we celebrate the creative differences that pop up all over the natural world. It's time that animal misfits get the credit they're due. After all, their unorthodox approach could be the next big thing. Jack Ford of Metro Focus recently sat down with Janet Hess, who's a series editor of the PBS program Nature. First question is, what then makes a misfit? Well, we've taken a look at so many animals across the whole spectrum of, of the planet, and we're, we're always looking at things that are so beautifully evolved, and the fastest and the strongest and the sleekest, and animals that, that work so well, designed by nature. And the, and the truth is, nature is always designing, and it's always trying new things. So there's a lot of experimenting out there, and there's often creatures that look like, huh, a little awkward, a little, what on earth was nature thinking there? And we wanted to take a look at those. But the fascinating thing I found in watching this is, is you're talking about, you've got categories here, some that seem to be ill-suited for their environment, others that, that, that seem to have developed this great specialization, but what else then can they do? And then some are just flat out, flat out different here. But yet, they all seem to work okay. They do work, uh, and they're finding creative solutions um, to do things differently than maybe the rest of their, their kind. So it's, it's really a case of there's not just one way to succeed. There's lots of ways to succeed, and we, we kind of want to highlight these very oddball, wonderful, uh, eccentric characters in this program. You know, it, early on, you're, we're watching the panda. And people love pandas. You know, there's something just about them that, that draws us to them. But all of a sudden, I'm learning things that I, that I didn't know about pandas. A non-meat-eating carnivore and their relationship with bamboo. What's that all about? I mean, they have carnivore teeth. Mm -hmm. They have a carnivore digestive tract. They were a real bear. And they live compl virtually almost completely off of this one plant that is so unnutritious that is so hard to digest, they have to eat constantly just to eke out enough energy, enough calories to keep on going. And we'd all love to interview pandas about that and, and sort of get their point of view, but all we can do is follow what they really do. And um, that's, that's uh, how they've been surviving for thousands of years. How about the big-headed mole rat? Well, First of all, that's an awful name it for is anybody a terrible to have name. to carry. And mole rats aren't the most glamorous of characters to begin with. And then to add a big head on top of uh, that sort of glorious uh, name. Uh, there are 36 kinds of mole rats, believe it or not, and they all live underground, all of them. They're really uh, very well adapted for that. And the big-headed mole rat has made another decision, and it's uh, forages out on the, on the surface, out on these grasslands, and... Um, isn't all that well adapted, it would appear, uh, to do that. So it uh, doesn't have uh, very good eyesight, doesn't have very good hearing, and it's also the favorite prey of the Ethiopian wolf. So it's really got a problem on its Yeah, hands. you don't want to be a big-headed no. wolf rat if you had a choice. It, it, it doesn't sound like, it like, your, your, like job, a your longevity is really good. That's an interesting point. It looks like a mistake. It looks like a mistake. But what's actually happening here is that it's created a partnership with a small bird called a moorland chat. 
and the chat really acts as its eyes and ears and alerts the mole rat to any danger. It's got great sharp eyesight. It sees wolves coming a long way away. And of course, the chat is foraging off all the little bugs that, uh, and worms and so forth that the mole rat is continually digging up as it mm -hmm. forages. So the two of them have teamed up um, and are able to survive together in that place uh, in spite of the wolves and in spite of the tough conditions. The message is it's always good to have a buddy. Sometimes you just need a little help from your friends. Exactly. Let me ask you about one other one just because it's fun to say. The Kakapo. <laughs> the Kakapo is a delightful character. It's a big parrot and it's the only parrot in the world that can't fly. And it uh, likes to feed in um, leaves that are very high up in the canopy and it has to climb. So it's, it's uh, it's a chubby, wonderful <laughs> little character, and um, but it's it's one of those that's really struggling to survive in its own home now. You and I were talking about the fact that nature has been around the program, mm. <laughs> that uh, part of nature, been around for more than thirty years. Yes, but still plenty of stories. For you plenty to tell. of stories. There's uh, new marvels uh, and new ways to tell old stories that we're familiar with. And the animals themselves are always doing th interesting things. And we find great characters to follow. And so um, we hope to be around for years to come. Well, Janet Hess, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Jack.